everyone zeta here again back with the remainder of the warlock cards to review we have a yog slash barnes card legendary for warlock it's a weird one it's a lot of stats potentially and also a card that might break wild yet again but probably not we'll talk about it and of course you want to win these cards we have our giveaway going on two standard bundles three mega bundles out of my pocket all you have to do to get into that giveaway it's only like a couple days left is like a comment to the video description below be subscribed to the channel and you have a chance to win anyways let's take a look at the last four warlock cards will it bring warlock control warlock preferably back well probably not well the other cards in the last batch were probably better for control but we'll take a look First, we have Wing Welding, a four mana spell, no spell school or anything like that. Discard your highest cost card, deal damage equal to its cost to all minions. That includes your own. So you could play this in like a discard warlock, but at least, well, that doesn't exist in standard at the moment. It just doesn't. And in wild, it's typically a more aggressive base deck. And if you're dealing a bunch of damage to your own minions, you're not exactly thrilled about that. What are you gonna, trying to hit currently in standard? Well, it's highest cost card. So you could hit a, a, a Fanata and deal 30 damage to everything. Although it's probably not 30 in your hand, but unless maybe you're playing Redithal, it's actually more than 30. But like that, that whole like soul barrage where you deal six random damage, that'd be pretty good. You would deal all that and deal six damage. But overall, I, I don't know what this goes into. Like, again, it's discard, but there's not a great payoff for discard. It's not consistent other than hitting your highest cost card. And I don't think Warlock is struggling that much for AoE that they want to play a four cost card that discards something really good. There are synergies out there to discard some cards, but they're not super expensive. And then you're like limiting yourself on what you can play unless you're just fine with discarding an expensive cost card or you're capping yourself off at like six mana and wild with like hand of Gul'dan and drawing three cards and dealing six to the board. That could be pretty good, but that's wild exclusive in standard. I'm gonna give it a one. I don't see this whole thing coming together in standard. There's like almost no discard synergies, very little. And this card can be an incredible early AOE doing a bunch of AOE damage to the board. I just don't think it's worth it. I, I, I don't know, like what if it hits your win condition? It's just, a, it's a tricky one. I'll bump it up to a two. It might have fringe usability. It's not an unplayable, terrible card because that can basically wipe any board on turn four as long as there's no divine shields or death rattles but at the end of the day discarding a valuable card can be really detrimental and i think with more payoffs for this maybe down the road it can be better and in wild again that discard strategy is quite aggressive you don't want to deal damage to your own stuff maybe you can build a control combo deck i know mark will but overall i'm going to give it a two in both formats i don't see it making the cut next we have the monstrous form a one mad uh, mana mana shadow spell give a friendly minion plus three plus three until your next turn you'll notice it doesn't die horribly like uh, power overwhelming used to do it's only one mana and this could lead to a lot of burst for those token decks and you know you'll lose that buff but the minion doesn't die like power overwhelming i just automatically think it's gonna blow up right um this was like a hero power in duels for one mana for a bit but I think that minion did die, if I remember correctly. But that was kind of a good thing with like a lot of eggs that could be beneficial. But overall, that's a lot of stats for dirt cheap. In wild, you have Tamsin, which can get this again for zero. You could do some, you could play this in Power Overwhelming and just put it on a Stone Test Boar, do like a million damage. Like they're piling up enough cheap shadow spells that maybe you can build a cheap burst deck with all your like your cute your, your little cute minions or discard warlock or whatever i think it's a decent card i think the aggressive decks can play it it's a lot of burst and uh your opponent might have to think about well this minion's got plus three plus three if i hit into it uh it's gonna lose those stats anyways do i leave it up right like it could play around aoe's too like there, there's a lot of i'm curious how it'll be like if you aoe it and it's at like one health left will it lose that minus three i would assume and then it would blow up but an interesting one but i'll give it a three in both formats i think this could see play 
and can lead to a lot of potential burst uh, lethal situations. And in WoW, there's also, I don't think Shadow Flame's in standard anymore, but Shadow Flame synergies, you buff up a minion, Shadow Flame it. There's also that too. And also with the location, right? There's that uh, new location that destroys uh, or co makes a minion, copy of a minion of the same stats. It won't lose those stats. So there's quite a bit going on for this card where I do think it will pop up. Uh, at least in aggressive decks and maybe in like some co potential combo stuff. It certainly has a shot. And hey, mana cheat. We got more mana cheat. A nine mana five five. Not many nine mana five fives. I actually can't think of one off the top of my head. There probably is some, but there can't be a lot. It is an imprisoned horror. It costs one less for each damage you've taken on your turns this game. So you play Symphony of Sins, deal six AOE to everything, including yourself. That's minus six on this. Life tap, minus two. Uh, Flame Imp, minus three. In Wild, if you have the coin, you can play Crystallizer, which deals five damage to yourself and gives you five armor. Another Crystallizer, which deals five damage and five armor. And I believe you can play it for free, unless the armor negates that, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it's something you can cheat out really fast and wild with uh, also Cobalt Library and Raise Dead. There's so many more self-damaging effects that are pretty nutty there, where I think it's a much better wild card. Whereas in standard right now, um, there's not that much amazing uh, self-damaging. There is that one mana spell that was put into the core set that deals four damage to a minion. Uh, deals four to yourself as well, which would make this right away five mana. But this has to be like zero, one, two mana consistently to be a meta good card that you can just cheat it out there. And none of like the aggressive decks right now do that. Uh, there's not like a big Dark Lair payoff. There's not a Demon Seed payoff. There's not a lot of self-damaging payoffs out there right now in Standard where I am going to give this a two in that format. But in Wild, where Pain Warlock's always pretty close, you got the Demon Seed, which people like to play. I I'm going to give it a three. I think this slots into those decks where it just lets you fight for board, get stats. You can raise dead it, bring it back for zero mana. There's always the problem of, you know, you're just going to die. And that's probably the, that's mostly the problem Warlock has in Wild right now. We have King's Bane Rogue and Pirate Rogue and Questor that just all smash you in the face that, yeah, you did self damage and now you're dead, right? Like it's really hard to accomplish, but absolutely think it could see play. And then lastly, we have the Warlock Legendary, Loken, Jailer of Yog saron a six mana, three, three. Ugh, not great. However, Battle Cry, discover a minion from your deck, summon a tentacle with its stats and taunt. So obviously you're gonna be wanting to run really big minions. You can run Phenotum, Lord of the Opera, right? Like you get a 15, 15 in stats on a taunt. That is broken in wild. You can play the darkness and get a 20, 20 taunt broken or just giants, right? It's good for those big handlock strategies and it gives you a giant taunt your opponent has to deal with and you also draw the minion by discovering the minion from your deck you also draw it getting it in hand which can help you out depending if it's playable it can help you out and a lot of the more controlish style of decks like to play you know not a ton of minions but a good amount of minions and some late game and maybe you just play this to tutor out your titan you really want to get to sargeras that is hopefully winning us all packs you could possibly tutor that out and it's a decent amount of stats to get a taunt on right like if you're playing this and playing a six man a three three you probably want to get like a five five or more in stats to taunt probably better than that and if you're playing a late game control strategy or a cheese deck that print what runs a lot of the big demons and undeads you're probably gonna hit one get a big taunt draw that card gain value i see this as a staple for those decks. It doesn't go into anything aggressive. It is more of like a cheese card or a control card. And I do see it seem play. I don't think it's outright Baroquin. I don't think you're building completely around it by like, I'm only playing Phenotum. I'm only playing the Darkness of Wild. I think you're just playing a lot of big stuff that you're trying to cheat out like with Void Caller and your uh, the five drop that cheats out undeads as well, right? You're gonna be doing that type of stuff and hoping to not totally low roll and hit one of those decent sized style minions where you get a big taunt, you get a four eight taunt, you get a 
a whatever, you know, a 9-7 taunt, a Malganus taunt, a 5-7 taunt. Those are totally acceptable. And then you're drawing that, gaining that value. I don't think it's a broken card, but I think it's serviceable, where I'll give it a 3 out of 5 in standard. In wild, where it's more like Curse Warlock, Reno Warlock, or just outright aggressive decks, it's too slow in my opinion, but maybe Reno Warlock can justify it as that kind of card to try and tutor out stuff, but they run so many more cheap battle cries and bad minions in terms of its stats. I don't see it quite as much, so I'll give it a two for a while, but I do think this can absolutely be a standard player. So maybe Control Warlock's got a shot. There's some AOE tools we showed in the prior video. We got some value. We have an amazing Titan that I hope we can survive to, and let's hope it works out because I really miss playing me some Control Warlock, and the cards are so cool. The Warlock cards have been so cool the last couple sets. I have to say, they haven't been powerful enough to really make a meta impact, at least at the higher levels, but damn, these cards are cool, and I really hope they make the cut. Anyways, tomorrow's Warrior, then all the cards are revealed, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day, and stay salty, my friends.